Hi, everybody. We're going on Facebook Live. That's right. Mm -mm. Hello, everybody. Just getting stuff set up. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. <laughs> it's Feisty Friday for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and exactly what we're going to talk about. Hello, my friend, Shruti. Nice to see you here. Welcome, everybody. Oh, my goodness. So, my name is Catherine McIntosh. Hi, Nikki. Love you guys. So, my name is Catherine McIntosh. I'm the founder of No Judgment Diet. And randomly, I'll get on Facebook Live and talk about... You are so welcome. Thanks for being here, Shruti. So, we'll talk about just random topics. Topics either that I'm looking at in my own life or topics I'm looking at in the business or topics that are apropos to sort of everything that's in my life. Morning, Miss Nikki. Hello from Australia. I love it. I love all my Australian friends. And Shruti, I'm not sure where in the world you are from. Um, I think you might be in India, but I'm not positive. So I'm glad you guys are here. Today, we're going to talk about the need. And in specific, so I've been looking at this energy around creation. And I just got off an energy poll. So I do monthly energy polls where a group of people get together and we pull in energy of possibility. And today the topic was all about where, where are we shooting ourselves in the foot with the need to complete something, with the need to create. Now I can't take total credit for this topic, right? So Gary, Douglas and Mr. Dane here, they are the founders of Access Consciousness and they are constantly delivering brilliant pieces of information. So I'm gonna kinda take what they talk about and put my own spin on it, but regardless, we are going to dive in to hopefully that this will contribute to you in a way that you can expand your life, you can expand your business, you can expand your money flows. Good morning, Nat, welcome. And really take these tools in a way that serve you because there's no like it doesn't serve to take tools or information or whatever sort of advice people give you and cater it to what they say you should do you should cater it to what works for you okay and so one of the things I've been looking at is this need to be right about what things look like. This need to be right about my own point of view. This need to be right. And when I'm right, right? And this is a wedgie from Mr. Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness. He said, Catherine, you'd rather be right than free. And this was over two years ago. And I'm like, oh, and I kind of knew he was right because he's almost always right. <laughs> and so I went into, Oh crap, I'm gonna have to look at this. So I've been, hi Beverly, hello from Europe. Oh, nice to see you here. So I've been looking at, if you guys wanna share this and you know other people that are just sitting on Facebook and are like, ooh, Catherine's talking about a really cool topic even though we don't know what we're talking about yet <laughs> and you wanna invite them into the conversation, please feel free to share. Um, we love, the more the merrier because my target with the No Judgment Diet is 10 million bodies out of judgment. So we definitely need all the contribution we can get and we'll take it anyway. Thank you, Nat, you're awesome. Says, sure. I'll share. Awesome. Love it. So of course it's, it's, it's not obligatory. It's more just if you want more friends. Wow. That's so cool. So Shruti says I'm actually inviting simultaneously. How cool are you? Love all of my amazing CFMWs. Awesome. Awesome. Hello, C Celine. I've missed you, my friend. You've been absent or I know you're creating, but I just want to say I miss you. So so one of this, this, these things is where do we shoot ourselves in the foot and where do we stop the possibility of creating a business, creating money, creating a future, creating different possibilities when we need to be right about what we think needs to show up, right? And so I had an experience a couple weeks ago that was not so fun. <laughs> 
<laughs> where I clearly saw that I was trying to be right and it got me in a lot of trouble actually it got me into sort of a difficult situation and you know it it's like Wow, instead of being a victim, instead of being pit, well, I was pissed off, but instead of going into the wrongness, I went, okay, clearly there's information here for me that I need to look at. And so when we create things in our lives showing up, right, that aren't the greatest, right? A cranky ex or a, you know, a, a tax bill that you're not expecting or a phone call from the IRS or, you know, somebody that you really care about getting sick or ill. Hi, huh, my friends, welcome to the party. So glad you're here. So when you, you know, when those things happen that are not so great, we often tend to go into the wrongness. And that wrongness perpetrates that we're right that that shouldn't happen. Which if we have the point of view that that shouldn't happen and need the need to be right, it stops us from receiving the contribution of possibilities that could be. Does that make any sense? Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> I'm gonna move my light. You guys are awesome. Hi, Heather. Missed you too. I've missed all my amazing friends that are here. Welcome to the party. We are talking about the need. So my friends, if you have a question, feel free to type it in the chat. If you have a comment, please feel free. You guys know that I'm all over the map. I will do my best to streamline a thought and no promises. <laughs> Hi, Gitu. Nice to see you. It's been forever. So, so what need have you decided you have to prove, wow, what you think will fix your wrongness? I'll ask that again. What need have you decided you need to have in order to prove, right, to you that you fixed your wrongness? So if you think you're crap about money, how often, yeah, Shruti says, wow, <laughs> right? Jamie, I missed you, oh, I love it. All my old friends are coming. I love you guys, so welcome to the party. So what need do you think you need to have in order to prove that you fixed the thing you've decided you're wrong about? So if you've decided, hello, if you've decided you're crap with money, how much of your life have you spent trying to fix the need to prove that you're not wrong about money? You want to know how to fix it? <laughs> I'll give you a very quick solution. Ready? You guys ready for it? Do you know what it is? <laughs> it's stop thinking you're wrong. Right? Stop thinking you're wrong. Shruti says a thousand percent, stop thinking you're wrong. Most of you have developed a need, so a need to make more money, a need to have better relationships, a need to maybe have better sex life, the need to be a better parent, all of those needs. I love the smiley faces and hearts. You guys are awesome. So if you want to share this, go ahead and share it if you haven't already. If you think there's someone out there that could really benefit from this conversation. So you guys know my target is 10 million bodies out of judgment with the no judgment diet. So <laughs> yeah, stop thinking you're wrong. Really simple fix, right? So if you want to share this, we all, we, in order to get 10 million bodies out of judgment, we definitely need an army of people addicted to consciousness and creation. So whatever need you've decided, right, you think you need to have is usually the need to prove like the area where you've decided you're the most wrong. So if you've decided you're wrong in, in money, how much of your life have you spent trying to create the need to prove you're right about money or to discover where the heck you're right because you keep thinking you're wrong. And the only place you're right is that you're right that you're wrong. 
<laughs> okay, so, wow, this is amazing. I, you know, I love coming on here. I love seeing you guys join me live. Um, I never know what we're going to talk about, it literally up until the moment. So Shruti's saying uh, money and marriage, right? Um, Gitu saying more clarity, please. Okay, so if you've decided you're wrong about money, and you grew up with the point of view of you'll always be poor, you have to work hard for your money, money doesn't grow on trees, money's hard to come by, all of those things, then you'll spend a good majority of your life creating a need to prove that you don't have that as a wrongness. Which, what does that create? More or less? If you've already designed your choices on the need to be right, that you're wrong, <laughs> right? And I'll say this again. So Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, he said to me two years ago, it'll be two years in February, at a seven day in South Africa, he said, Catherine, you'd rather be right than free. And I was like, oh, I know you're right, but I don't like it. It's true. I'd rather be right than free. And I've seen what that, okay, I'll say more, I'm saying more. I can only speak so fast and I already speak really fast. So it was like everywhere where I've decided I'm right was literally keeping me from the freedom of choice, okay? That would create a different possibility. So freedom of choice is literally seeing that you have choice with everything. So if you've chosen something and it didn't create what you wanted, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll go into being a victim of that choice, right? And I've got a telecall in February, February, I think 5th, 6th, 7th on the freedom of choice. And we're going to literally destroy and uncreate everywhere where we've embedded in our bodies, in our beings, in our, in our thought processes, this need to be right. Because when you need to be right that your body's screwed up, that you don't, you'll never be good at relationship, that marriage is not for you, and you're, you'd rather be right about that point of view, that point of view will literally create a jail cell for you, right? And what happens is that you will literally attract things that will limit, stick, and confine you. Kind of crazy, huh? I think it's kind of crazy. <laughs> so Gitu says wrong about not being diplomatic. Well, great. So how much have you spent your own entire life trying to, the need to prove that you're diplomatic? Wow. This is cool. Wendy says, I came from the COP in LA. Woohoo! And the body is purging everywhere. Grateful for it. At the same time, things changed and went to ground zero quickly. So I noticed how I'm going into conclusions about what will change my finances. Right. And then it cuts off. So so this is what I'm talking about. And Wendy, thank you for so eloquently showing us the energy, which is something will happen, we'll create a choice, right? And we conclude what that choice will create. So I'm going to go to the COP. If I go to, and I'm just using it, I'm not saying that this was your point of view, Wendy, but I know I've done this with a class in the past where I'm like, oh, I'm going to COP. COP is going to create a greater possibility for my future. And then all of a sudden I come home and shit hits the fan, right? Crap goes to ground zero or whatever you want to label it as. And then what? We go into the wrongness because our conclusion of what we decided going to that class will create is not showing up in the way we've decided. So guess what? It validates the need to be wrong. And it invalidates all of the choices and because every choice plants a seed or every choice plants a million seeds. So Shruti says, is that a vested outcome? Yes, it depends on your point 
of you. So like I said, I don't know Wendy's point of view. I'm not going to put my point of view on top of her. I'm just giving an example of what I've done in the past. We're like, oh, I'm going to this class. It's going to create more. And then my life falls apart, <laughs> right? And in those moments where my life falls apart, I go, oh my gosh, what did that choice create that I'm not acknowledging? Okay. And what's the greater future that I can't yet see. So in order to build a new house on top of an old house, you got to break the foundation down, right? So Wendy's saying, so I noticed how I'm going into conclusions about what will change my finances, a job, talk to people like a push, take action, even though my body is still purging and not at all settled yet. Okay. What do you suggest? That's amazing. So you're talking to someone who just spent three days in bed, <laughs> purging everything I could possibly purge, right? Wow. I love this. You guys are amazing. See? We always land on the topic that's required. That's what I love about consciousness is so, so I was in bed for three days and I just talked about this on the energy pulls for the clarity of creation is for those three days, all I could do is shake and sweat and shake and be freezing and take a hot bath and crawl back into bed and drink some hot tea. And I was just like, you know, not in a good place. And I looked at, I did cancel some clients and I looked at canceling some of my online classes and I went, that's not going to create more if I do. So I'm going to show up even though I have no makeup on. I look like total crap. I can barely talk. All I want to do is sleep. I don't want to talk to anyone, but I still showed up. And here is the key. I showed up and I knew that on the other side of it, there was going to be more ease. I also knew that if I didn't judge me and if, an, and if I was an allowance of what my body needed to go through, that's something greater. So today I woke up and I didn't feel a hundred percent, but I was like, body, do you need to move? And it was like, yes, go to yoga. And I was like, are you sure? I don't want to throw my back out again. Cause I got sick, threw my back out and, and had a snafu with the ex <laughs> all in 10 days. It was awesome. <laughs> right. Highly recommend it. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Gitu, with or without makeup. So love you too. So what if the rest so I'm going to say this. So giving myself permission to rest for three days, to cancel clients, to show up when it was required, even when I didn't want to, gave me the energy to keep going. I woke up today. I asked my body if it required movement. It said, yes. I went, oh, are you sure? It said, yes. I said, okay, what do you require? I went where it required. I did what it asked. And then all of a sudden I got done and I was like, Oh, I completed a bunch of errands. I went to the bank. I like did some really cool stuff. And I was like, oh, the allowance of the rest opened a new door and planted a new seed. So the breakdown, right? And I just heard Gary say this on the creative edge of consciousness call today. He said that, um, niacin, so niacin, N-I-A-C-I-N, niacin can help your body eliminate what it's holding on to. So what he said is if we take a substance or a supplement or even a food and we take too much of it, our body will tend to hold on to the buildup. Well, when we get sick, what's it doing? It's breaking up the buildup and trying to release it out of the body, which creates the sickness, right? Which contributes to the sickness. And so he was saying to take niacin in increasing levels, right? To eliminate the toxic buildup of the substances your body is hanging on to. Because when you do a lot of change really quickly, guess what happens? It tries to get rid of the substances, energies, and toxicities in your body that your body no longer needs. So I don't have a specific recommendation of, for any of you. What he told a woman on the call, he said, start with, I think it was either a hundred milligrams or a thousand milligrams. I think it was a hundred, then increased to two, like the next day increased to 200, the next day increased to 300, the next day increased to 400, like keep increasing the amount to really eliminate it. 
I'm not suggesting you do that. I'm suggesting you follow your awareness. But if niacin is light in your body right now, like it's light for me to go get some today, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to help with that. So check this out. How much tox toxic buildup is in your body with the need to be right? <laughs> Shruti says, heal me. <laughs> Right? So can you guys gander a guess how much toxicity and toxic buildup is in your body with the need to be right? A lot? A little? Or a me right, so you and I both need to take some. <laughs> All right. So, right, this toxic buildup can be thoughts, can be emotions, can be the need to try and get things right. And your body's like, um, right, right. Jamie's like a lot. So Jamie, your body in particular may require some niacin. See if it's light in your universe. Because if we don't judge the sickness or the pain or the financial crunch, because what happens is we'll conclude something financially. We go into a conclusion about it. Right? And then if it doesn't show up the way we've expected, projected, or decided it needs to, then what? We're left with the toxic buildup of judgment. I love this. Shruti says, I'll have some MTBSS on my abdomen. She says, for two hours, I've been running MDDM and MTVSS on my full abdomen. So for those who don't know, um, those are two body processes in access consciousness and you actually um, get them in the foundation. So foundation is an amazing class. I'm actually facilitating one in Colorado. You guys are all welcome to come. February, I think it's the 10th through the 14th. Um, and then um, Mr. Gary Douglas and Simone Millicis are coming for a Choice of Possibilities class. Look at my friends joining. I love you guys. They're coming for a Choice of Possibilities class in Denver as well the following weekend. I think it's the 16th, 17th, and 18th. So anyone is welcome to Denver. That's where I live. <laughs> Mountains and snow and beauty and open space. Right, so Gitu says doubting, thank you for the nice and doubting if I know or not. Well, that doubting if you know or not, is that the need to prove that you're wrong? Versus knowing that you know, right? Would that be toxins in my body too? Yes! Right, COP starts the 16th of February in Denver. Who's coming? It's going to be an amazing, amazing class. Um, you know, Gary and uh, Dane are currently in Venice. They're doing the Art of Creation class. And um, they're going to be bringing all their juices to the COP in Denver. And then the foundation with me, yours truly, <laughs> will be in Denver doing a class that weekend, the weekend before. So I believe it's the 10th. Well, I, sh I think I said it wrong. 10th, it's the 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th. So Jamie says, the money isn't showing up and my body is detoxing and trusting it will be okay. That's my challenge right now. Totally. That's the biggest thing is how much does the body actually know about future that you haven't yet acknowledged? I'll ask that again. How much does the body know that you haven't yet acknowledged, right? The body knows about future. So if the body's getting sick, what's it preparing for you for that you can't yet see? And what happens is we go into, oh no, instead of sweet, I wonder what's on the other side. So what if shit happens and you go, sweet, I wonder what's on the other side. Is that lighter than, oh my God, what's wrong? <laughs> Cool. Jamie's saying that makes me teary way more than I've been acknowledging. Exactly. Exactly. So if you guys are just joining us, we are talking about the need to be right. Oh, it's so fun. All these needs that we have. We have the need to be right. We have the need to be wrong. We have the need to prove. We have the need to justify. We have the need to make us wrong. It's kind of insane. And every time you create a need, 
Not a need for creation, but a need that invalidates your being. You limit the possibilities of the universe contributing consciousness to every molecule of you. That's a meme. <laughs> That's also a SoundCloud clip. But <laughs> um, So everything you've decided about what choosing needs to look like for you, everything you've decided about what creation needs to look like for you, everything you've decided about what money needs to look like for you, right? Will you now let it go? Wow, yeah, baby. Zah, you're the bomb. <laughs> oh, wow. So, wow. What if, my friends, you didn't have a need to prove you right or wrong? What would you create? Right? And so I'm getting really excited about this class besides foundation that I'm doing in Denver Live. If you live on a place in the world where you've decided you can't come to Denver, come play. Right, You could do back-to-back -back Catherine McIntosh and then Simone and Gary. <laughs> How much fun would that be? But if you're in a place, we're doing an online class called Freedom of Choice. And it really is looking at this area of our lives where, wow, where are we creating a need to be right? right? A need to, <laughs> Zah's saying, oh my God, this is like one of our energy pools. Totally. It kind of is where I'm all over the map. And I love this. Shruti's saying it's a tsunami of phenomenons and brilliance. I love you. Thank you. I won't receive that. Tsunami coming at you. <laughs> Hopefully with ease. <laughs> Oh, that's so cute. Maybe I should put like a tsunami emoticon in front of my bulldozer. <laughs> so I can warn people. <laughs> so <laughs> phenomenon's coming through. So one of the things is to really look at where, you know, whether or not you come play with us with freedom of choice, it's a Zoom, online Zoom, where actually not like this, where you actually get live facilitation face to face over video chat with me. And we get to dive into the molecules of your body and we get to play and do one, two, threes and use the tools of access consciousness and be irreverent and laugh our butts off and actually look at the places where we're letting choice and no choice control us. Because what happens is, check this out, you'll choose something, right? And, and maybe you don't do this, maybe it's just me. Choose something and then you conclude what is going to show up based on that choice. And if the conclusion you've decided doesn't show up, then you go into judgment and wrongness of you. Well, when you're in judgment of you, you can't be aware of what would work for you. And when you're in the wrongness of you, you can't be the gift of you, right? Both things that I stole that Gary Douglas has said numerous, numerous, numerous times, right? So I'm not saying anything new, just maybe saying it in a way that you might hear differently today. So that is the gift is when you conclude and judge and are in the wrongness of you, you can't be the gift of you. You can't be aware of what would work for you. And then you become a victim to your own judgments. <laughs> and when you're a victim, do you have choice or have you decided you have no choice? How crazy is that? So how many no choice universes are you using against you to create you as being a victim to your own choices? <laughs> uh, am I the only one finding this funny? <laughs> I'm finding it very funny because I'm looking at all the places where I've created being pathetic to my own choices, being a victim to my own choices, playing small to my own choices. So what if you could let go of that now? So my friends, on three, can we do a one, two, three? <laughs> Christian says, wow, exactly. 
Exactly. We are going to do three live 90 minute on zoom freedom of choice calls. If you're ready for a new reality, a new possibility, a new creation, we want to invite you in. We'll post the link after the Facebook live. So feel free to share it. Feel free to sign up. Feel free to investigate. Feel free to ask us questions, right? And if it's light to come play, you are all invited. Okay. So on three, Ready? <laughs> All the places where you've been a victim to your choices and then decided you don't have a choice. <laughs> On three. One, two, three. Wow. <laughs> okay, one more. One, two, three. Woo. One, two, three. Wow. And one more. One, two, three. And I'm four, opening the door to a different possibility with recognizing how much choice you actually have. Wow. Ready, my friends? I'm four. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Can you tell I get a little excited? <laughs> I'm four. One, two, three, four. So if I would have done this yesterday, I was not here, right? So Zaz saying, that's so funny. I see now what I was doing with alcohol, right? So all the places we go into choice and then we've decided we don't have choice. And then we become a victim to the fact that we don't have choice, but we made the choice in the first place. <laughs> Christian saying, amazing. Thanks a lot. You are so welcome. So my friends, now's the time, whatever you're ready to let go of. Thank you, Gitu. Whatever you're ready to let go of in all the places you've decided you're a victim. There are no victims, there's only survivors. And guess what? You're a survivor of your own shit. <laughs> Too bad they don't give gold stars in school for being survivors of your own shit. <laughs> okay, so on four, are you guys ready to open the door? and change it, whatever you're ready. So this is what I want to say to you, even if it's 1%, even if you're ready for 1% change right now on four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Yeah, baby. That is a meme. <laughs> so Gitu saying, <laughs> I love you guys. Gitu saying just, you guys get a close up of me. Um, just today I was wondering to choose or not choose based on what will show up right versus will this choice create more for the future I want to have? So that's a question that you can start asking. Is this choice in alignment with the future I want to create? Not from conclusion, but the energy the possibility, the seeds, the creation, not the need to prove that this is what needs to show up. So I love that, Gitu. Appropriately timed, consciousness in action. It always shows up, but just never in the way you expect. Compliments of Dr. Dane here. That's his brilliant thing. So Zillia saying, that just blew my mind. Yay! Beverly saying, there is so much freeing my body up. Yeah! I'm doing a happy dance. <laughs> Doesn't I do a happy dance with me? <laughs> we'll have online happy dances. <laughs> so you want to start asking, will this choice create more for the future I know is possible, right? And is this choice in alignment with the future I'd like to have? And here's the thing. It can't be a future that's solid in its point of view of what it needs to look like. I love this. Guess the universe wants me to choose to become a CF. Cool. So when, where, how, without the conclusion of the when, where, how. More the lightness of the possibility. Plant the seed and let the universe contribute to you without the need to you to have to do it alone, which is what? When you decide you need to do it alone, you're being a victim. When you recognize that everything in the universe wants to contribute to the greatness of you, then you are a survivor of your own shit. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I clearly am happy. I'm doing a happy dance. I feel a thousand times lighter. Cool. So Jamie says my head is lighter. Awesome. You guys are amazing. So do you have any questions? Anything you want to ask? If it's in alignment with the topic, if it's totally off left center, I'm not going to answer. I'll just 
answer it for next time. Next time we do Facebook Live. So when we're done with this Facebook Live, we will post the link for the Freedom of Choice if you want to come play. We might even put the foundation if you guys are tempted to come play in Denver. All right, and you can come to the COP in Denver, right? I love this. Gabby says, wow, thank you. Christian saying with every sentence, it gets lighter. My friends, that is the gift you are, right? I'm willing to be it to show you the possibility, but I'm not it alone it takes every single one of you choosing the lightness that creates a greater possibility right I don't want to freaking be an island I spent my whole life being an island I'm over it I want playmates that want to play with possibility right yeah cool so um, Shruti saying, I've held lots of freaking judgments in my body and all of a sudden I've put on 15 to 20 kilos, right? So I don't know if you know that the no judgment diet exists. So the no judgment diet is this freaking phenomenal. Well, it's a whole lot of things and it's an approved now access specialty class. But one of the things is there's a 90 day online course with six live coaching facilitated calls, right? And it's freaking amazing if you do it. Now, if you let it sit in your inbox and you don't actually, you know, watch the video modules and play the clearing loops and do the mirror exercise, it's not gonna contribute. But if you are like, holy crap, because here's the thing, it's not about the food. What judgment does, judgment destroys possibility. Judgment destroys awareness and judgment does not create more, right? So when you start to go on a no judgment diet, you're literally taking a break from the need to judge you. <laughs> and when you let go of the need to judge you, your body will change, your shape will change, your finances will change, your relationship will change. So not only do we do this online course, but we have live events all over the world. Our first live event this year in 2018 is gonna be in April. We're planning on it being in LA. That could change, but for right now it's in LA. Um, and we will be putting that schedule up in the No Judgment Diet page, this page that you guys are on right now um, and it will show up soon and that way you guys can kind of look at it we're gonna have a special for those of you that want to choose to come play with us and um, I love this Christian saying amen judgment destroys possibilities so every time you judge you you destroy the possibility you are to the world that's a meme every time you judge you you destroy the possibility you are to the world <laughs> Wow, Gabby says, yes, you are so right. I have judged my body my whole life. Me too. Why do you think I created the no judgment diet? <laughs> I may have been part of the college of judges, so I'm making amends. <laughs> I love this. Beverly has actually been at the live class in London this August, and she said it's life-changing, and JD is my favorite. I freaking adore you, Shruti. Love you all too. I love you guys. I'm so grateful you're here. So please come play if it's light for you. If you want to share what we're doing with the world, we could use all the sharers we can get. And we just thank you for being here, for choosing more of you. And my invitation is whatever you do, no more judging you. <laughs> Okay, you are adorable, says Gitu. Thank you. I will receive it. Oh, I love this. Bridget saying, I did a decision. I I did today a decision for a job because I had not a total yes or no to it. How I choose clear, it felt sometimes light and sometimes heavy. Well, Bridget, will choosing that create more for your future? Is it in alignment? <laughs> I love you, Jamie. Is it in alignment with the future you have? And so what you can ask is, wow, what's light about choosing the job and what's heavy about choosing the job? So what future are you aware of and what future will get created that you don't want to be aware of? Okay, so I know I said that really fast. When we post this, you'll be able to go back and listen, but play with, wow. So, because what if it's not necessarily a total clear or a total heavy. So what will your future look like if you choose it right now? What will your future in five years be like if you say yes? 
what will your future be like in five years if you say no? Okay, so my friends, that is the creation of possibilities, is the willingness to get it wrong. Because here's the thing, you can always choose it and then change your mind. You can also not choose it and then ask for something greater or something different. So what invitation and what gift is this job that you haven't acknowledged? Like not necessarily that you have to say yes, but what if you were just willing to play rather than the need to get the decision right? When we are trying to get things right, we can't be aware. So you want to look at it every angle, right? Every single angle. And then the next thing I would ask, and this can you can use this tool for anything you guys are looking at. And Jamie, thank you so much for sharing. Is what is their agenda with hiring you and what's your agenda with getting the job? If your only agenda with getting the job is about money, is it the right fit or is there something else? Can you choose something else? Or what else is possible? Is it a filler? Does it have to be the end all be all? So just start looking at all of those things. So my friends, I freaking adore you. Thank you for being here. You're amazing. Happy freaking Friday. And whatever you do, go out and have way too much fun. <laughs> Be totally wrong, right? Have no need except for the need to play with possibilities. So I love you guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks for sharing, Christian. Thank you guys. Violetta, mwah, you're so welcome. You're so welcome, Gina. I love you guys. Bye for now, and we'll see you on the flip side. Thanks for watching. Mwah.